Hello, welcome to the View and Do Video Craft Classroom. My name is Avis Everett, and I'm the author of some of Plaid's Bow Dazzler books. Today you're in for a treat because we're going to teach you how to make a beautiful decorator basket for your home. It can be in any color, any design, and for any room. Don't forget gifts, too. You're going to love what you're going to learn. You know, when I go into a craft store, sometimes I'm a bit overwhelmed. Some of the things look too difficult for me. And then some of the things look a little too simple, and I'm not even sure I want to fool with them. But when I found out about Stiffy and Mod Podge and Fabric and how they all came together, I got really excited because it's easy and something that I could do. I'm not an artist, I don't paint, but I want a pretty finished piece. Something that has pizzazz, has interest, and is worth my time. And that's what we're going to teach you today. That's a bow dazzler basket. You, so, you know, sometimes when people take a look at a basket like this, they're a little bit overwhelmed. And they think that the basket probably is too difficult for them. For example, they say, I don't paint. I know I couldn't create a basket like that because look at all the painted design that's on the top. And then they say, another thing I've never been too good at is tying bows, so I don't think I could make one of these baskets. But I've got great news. This is nothing in the world but a cut and paste craft. Let me show you a secret. This basket was created with this piece of chintz material. Now, it did take a yard of the fabric, and I used it in different ways. You can see the design that's on the front of the, the center of the fabric, and that's what I used for the design on the top of the basket. Then, all of the border print that runs down the edges is what I used for my bows. And this is the way that I created a beautiful bow dazzler project for my home. And this sits right in my living room and adds design and color where I had nothing before, so it really is a wonderful addition to the room. Now relax and enjoy because today you're going to learn how to create one of these baskets step by step. It's easy, it's fun, but the results are amazing. Are you all excited and ready to begin your Bow Dazzler project? Well, before you start, you'll need to make a quick trip to your favorite craft store and perhaps to your favorite fabric shop. I'm going to show you some of the things that you really need to create a Bow Dazzler basket, but we have so many different ways you can go with this that we want you to be creative and do whatever you want to do with your project. Now, since I'm going to be demonstrating this particular basket today, I'm going to talk to you about the things that I used on that particular project. First of all, I went to a beautiful fabric store and I chose this particular piece of fabric. I bought one yard and by the way this is 54 inch wide fabric so this would be the best to choose if you can find it. If you can't you can choose 45 inch wide fabric. We have books that will teach you how to cut both pieces and we're going to show you today how to work with the 54. Of course fabric comes in other widths but these are the best widths to make your boat as or projects. Now when you get home from the fabric store you know the direction you're going to take because you look at your fabric and you study it and you decide from there what colors you're going to need, what paints you're going to choose, and then of course, what is this particular yard of fabric going to be put on? Now for a bow dazzler project, most people do choose a wicker basket. In this case, I chose this particular piece. It was an inexpensive piece of wicker. It came from my favorite craft store and it had a handle and I knew it would be a pretty addition to the basket, but you don't have to have a handle, that's up to you. Some people also choose paper mache and other things perhaps a mirror, perhaps a trunk. People do this on trays, all kinds of wicker items. But in this case, I chose a basket. Now that I have my basket chosen and my fabric, I'm ready to begin my trip in the craft store. I've got to choose my paint. I'm going to use paint that's going to be a complement to the cloth. And usually I paint my basket to match the background of the fabric. In this case, I went to the craft store and I purchased Folk Art Wicker White Spray Paint. I'm going to use the spray paint to paint the basket. And it's going to just take a couple of steps and I'll be through in no time. It dries quickly too and you'll like that. The other thing that I bought while I was there was my trim paint. The trim paint is the folk art and the color is heather. Heather is a beautiful match. If you'll look at the pretty lavenders in the fabric, I chose the heather because I like the color with the material. Of course, you might decide that it would be prettier to trim in dark green and there's so many gorgeous folk art colors. Wait till you get to the store. It's unlimited. All right, the other thing that I bought while I was there was the item that I need for sure to make my bow and that's Stiffy. Stiffy is a fabric stiffener that's going to turn this ordinary piece of material that you see here into a beautiful hard finished bow like this. Now the other item that I bought was Gloss Mod Podge. 
Now, Mod Podge comes in matte finish and gloss finish, but I prefer the gloss because I'm going to use this later as a sealer. But right now, it's going to be the glue that glues the appliques onto the wicker. Now, what are the appliques? These are the designs that I'm literally going to cut out of my fabric and glue on with Mod Podge. Then, of course, you see another important thing here, and that's High Shine. High Shine is a spray finish that I like because it gives a beautiful, glossy, lacquered finish to your Bodazzler baskets. Now, you might not want such a shine, so we have other things we're gonna show you, but on this particular basket, I did put a shine on it and introduce this beautiful lacquered finish with the product that you see here, High Shine. We call it Red Label just to help us find it in the store. The other items that I have here are just materials, and these are going to make you smile because they're so easy to get your hands on, you're just gonna go open the kitchen cabinets and there they'll be. First of all, you need some cups, and I know that you remember that these are going to be used for stuffing the bow later on after we get the bow tied. And of course, I have a size small, I have large, I have all sizes, because that depends on the size bows that I make. I also have a paper plate, which I use as my palette for trim painting. I have a brush that I'm going to use for trim painting, and of course, that's going to be the brush that I'm going to use to dab on this pretty heather color around the edge of the basket. And I also have clothespins. The reason I use clothespins is because they're wonderful for clipping our strips of fabric over the coat hanger for drying when we get ready to create the bow. And the last thing, of course, is a coat hanger, and that's in your closet, and you're going to use that for your hanging system. This is really all it takes to create a bow dazzler basket. So get all of your supplies together, get your fabric, get your wicker chosen, and it's going to be time to spray paint the project and get started. Since this is the project that we're working on today, I'd like to tell you how I started. I went to my favorite craft store and chose a wicker basket that looks like this, that has no paint on it, and then I looked at my fabric to be sure that I knew the color that I wanted to choose. And in this case, the background of the fabric is white, so I chose Folk Art Wicker White Spray Paint. This spray paint is an aerosol paint, so I just went outside in a well-ventilated area and sprayed my basket with two coats, and voila, I have a beautiful basket ready to decorate with my bow dazzler technique. Now the next step is going to be that I wanna trim the basket. What is trimming? It's taking a beautiful color, a contrast color, something from the material, and decorating the basket with one additional touch. All I did was look at my material. Again, I chose uh, the pretty lavender color because it's such a compliment to the cloth. I found this at the craft store. This is folk art, Heather. Heather's the perfect color. The lavender seemed right with the fabric, and I'm ready Ready now to trim paint the basket. Now in trim painting the basket, I use a paper plate and I always keep a damp paper towel nearby in case I need to do any correcting, but you want your brush to be handy and you just put enough of the paint right onto a paper plate to use as a palette and you're ready to begin. Just dab the brush into the, paper, to the paint and go over to the basket. And I usually start right here at the edge with a real light stroke. Don't don't be too heavy at first until you're sure you're in the right areas where you need to be. And then you wanna start painting all along that ridge. Now look, I've accidentally gotten a little down onto my basket, so now I use my damp cloth and I get rid of that little bit of paint and I keep going. Because when you're working with this, it's a water-based paint and as you go, you can clean up your mistakes. Of course, once they dry, you're going to have to um, repaint with a dab of white, so let's just keep it as neat as we can as we go. Now some people find this step a little difficult because they're trying to paint in a small area. And as you know, sometimes the ridges on a basket are not well defined or the rim is not well defined. So it's best just to keep an eye for where you think it would look pretty to have the color. And if you don't think you need to go down into an area, then leave it off. Like sometimes a small area like this, I will leave off as I go around and band the color. What I'm doing is trying to add this pretty contrast color all the way around the basket, but only in the areas that it will really be a compliment. So I'm gonna leave off that little area there because that sticks out and might look irregular and I won't put it there. Of course, this is up to you. You may do this step and you may leave it off. Some people aren't into the trim painting as much, but I like to just more or less trim to set off the design of the pretty appliques that are coming. And of course, it will look real jazzy when you get the bow put on. Now let's take a look under here and see. Be sure I put it all through there. 
and I did get some accidentally in the area that I don't need it, so I'm gonna go back and use my cloth and just wipe that off. Of course, I can do that until it partially dries. Once it's dry, then it's on there. Okay, now at times, I go all the way a rim and just around the rim and just leave it. At other times, I like to paint the handle as well. And in this case, I was very energetic and I painted the handle and the rim of the basket. And I also painted around the bottom of the basket. What I'm doing is adding that band of color around the top and the bottom just to make the piece more interesting. And this is up to you. If you have time to do that, fine. Maybe you'll only have time just to trim the handle. Whatever you choose to do, it will be beautiful. While the trim paint is drying on our basket, we can get started doing the things we need to do to prepare for the bow. You remember that we bought one yard of fabric. The yard of fabric is 54 inches wide, and I like to place it on a table just to make it real easy to cut. At this point, you're going to need to cut strips of cloth. It's so simple. Look at the bow again, and let's examine why we need strips. We're going to use strips to create the loops for the bow. Of course, these are the loops. We're going to need another strip for the streamer and a small strip for the connector. But the way we begin all of this is by using long strips. So you take your fabric, place it on a table or perhaps on the floor wherever it's easy to cut and convenient, and then just do some quick measuring. I'm measuring an eight inch wide strip and I'm going to cut it off of either end, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to begin my cutting in one place at the selvage. Your goal is to cut the strips from selvage all the way over to the other selvage. These unprinted edges on each side of the fabric are the selvage, and every piece of fabric has this, whether it's 45 inch wide or 54 inch wide. Now you wanna go to the end of the cloth, and you simply want to cut about an eight inch wide strip, and I'm just going to use this yard, this little measuring uh, tape to measure, and I'm going to come down and measure approximately eight inches wide, and I'm gonna start my first strip. And I'm going to cut straight across the strip of fabric, starting at the selvage, and if I do, if I place the fabric over in this manner, it will make it a little bit easier to cut, just to keep up with what I'm doing. Just place it like this and continue to cut, and you wanna cut the entire strip as you go. Just follow and cut the strip as straight as you can. Now, some people like to draw a pencil line across, and if you wanna do that, that's fine, but you don't have to be so accurate or so perfect. That's why I like doing the bow dazzler technique, because if you get a little off with your cutting, it's not going to matter. Everything will fold nicely and still look perfect, so you don't have to be too particular, but you generally need to cut it about eight inches wide and keep it as even as you can. This is what I have when I finish. A strip of fabric. It's 54 inches this way, it's eight inches wide this way. Now I'm going to call this strip the streamer strip. I'm going to use this fabric to create streamers for the bow. But for now, let's just put it aside and let's do the very same procedure for one more strip. What am I going to do? Again, I go back to my fabric, I place my yard, my yard stick or ruler, or in this case, a tape measure down, and in this case, I wanna cut again, smooth the fabric up. I wanna cut from selvage to selvage, and so you just measure and you cut. Again, as straight as you can, all the way across the fabric. Let's move this out of the way, and it does help to fold this over just to be my guide to keep me going in a straight line. Continue across. I'm gonna use this piece for the loops of the bow, and I always want my two strips to be the same, the same width. They don't have to be the same length, but they should be to get you going. Okay, what do I have? I have two strips now. They're both identical. They're 54 inches this way and they're eight inches wide this way. And I'm going to rest those aside now and put them somewhere where they won't get any paint on them or won't get dirty because at the right time, we're gonna make bows out of these two strips of fabric and it's gonna be so easy, you won't believe it. Now what's left? Take a look. I have almost a half yard left. This half yard is going to be used for the appliques or the cutouts. Now let's take a look at the project one more time. These are the fabric appliques that you see right here 
and I have them on this end of the basket as well. But you might choose to put some inside, outside. You can put them anywhere. The appliques are going to add a beautiful pattern. They're going to add design, and they're going to look hand-painted. And sometimes when people see these baskets, that's what they really think. But this is nothing in the world but cut straight from this piece of material and glued on with Mod Podge. All right, let's just talk about getting the appliques together. What I usually do is section my fabric. I take a look at some of the areas that I want to cut and I just section it so that I can go around like this with my scissors. And this is going to probably be a beautiful section that I'll use as an applique. So I just use that piece and this piece. What am I trying to do? I'm just trying to get small sections so that they'll be easier to handle so that I don't have to sit down and cut an entire piece of fabric at one time. You just want lap size pieces, smaller segments or pieces like this make it easier to work with. And you can do as many of these as you want to. If you want to cover the entire basket, you would cut several sections. Then I find it very easy to use small scissors at this point. I use my big scissors for cutting strips and I use smaller scissors for detail cutting my appliques. Now let's take a look at these appliques. This is the beautiful section that you see that probably is identical to this one. And I'm going to want to put this onto the wicker in the same way. So I've got to get busy and I've got to literally detail cut this piece of fabric. The way I begin is I just start at the edge and I take my small scissors and I start cutting and I cut around the design. Now sometimes this takes a few minutes because you want to be careful. You want to be real exact as you cut. And you want to just work your way around the design with your scissors, just detail cutting everything and throwing away anything that you don't want to keep. Usually the background, of course, you're not going to keep. Turn the fabric as needed, cut around, cut around. Now this is where I always have to fuss at my students when I teach because I say you've got to be very, very detailed when you do your cutting. You're going to have to really go inside the design, outside the design, all the way around the design because what your goal is is you want to leave absolutely no background whatsoever. You want to cut all the background away because the background is going to be that beautiful painted wicker white basket. So you don't want background color left in the design. Now this takes a few minutes, and sometimes I enjoy doing this in front of the television or maybe while you're, oh, possibly listening to someone speak or you might sneak these out and do this on a trip when somebody's driving the car for you and you're just sitting there. You'll be surprised. It takes a few minutes, but you'll get a nice little bag full of cutouts before you know it, and then you're ready to do your appliques. So you're going to cut and you're going to detail cut and continue working your way around this piece just like I'm doing. Now take a look right here. Let me just point out something. Do you see this area? This is where you have a background showing. Then what you do with your scissors is literally just poke a hole, go inside, and cut away that little area. I bet you're saying, how ridiculous. Why should anybody fool with something like that? But the truth of the matter is this detail cutting is going to create openings in the fabric and those openings are going to give you the hand-painted look that you really want. And this is what you see when you see something like this. You see the openings and the areas in the wicker showing through, and the detail looks very hand-painted when you do that. So that's your goal in your detail cutting. And small scissors are helpful, but you can use whatever is comfortable and easy to handle. And before you know it, if you keep going, you're going to end up with beautiful appliques or cutouts that you're ready to glue on the project. Now, I'm working my way around the design, and I'm going to continue on and continue on, and soon I'm going to have my applique completed. Now, let's take a look at some of the appliques that I have cut and let you see one that is completed. The appliques all came from the same piece of material, and they're totally finished, and look at the way they look. You can see these openings and you can see the way that I detail cut and there's no background left, no white fabric at all. And that's my goal to completely eliminate the background. Okay, when you get to this point then, you're ready to do your Mod Podging. You're ready to pick the pieces that you want to put onto the basket. So let's go ahead and move these things away and we'll work on this at another time. And let's get the items that we need to do the Mod Podging and put the appliques on. Of course, you want to be sure that the basket is dry before you begin this process. And our basket appears to be totally dry. 
All the trim paint is ready, and now we can put on the appliques without messing up the trim paint. I always want to give it time to totally dry. And then I put foil again on my countertop just to protect the table or the counter that you're working on. And then I get my gloss Mod Podge. Mod Podge is the product, you remember, that's the glue that we're going to use to put the appliques onto the wicker. And the reason I like gloss Mod Podge is because it's slow drying and it's going to give you a clear, dry finish when it's finished that's going to look perfect. So Mod Podge is what you want to work with. And then, of course, you want to get your appliques and you want to look at them. And at this point, I always encourage my students to play around with the designs and decide how they want the appliques to be placed on the basket. You might want something large like this or something smaller. You have several appliques if you've cut all this out, and you can choose the ones that you like the best and then place them right onto the basket. Now, in order to do this, you will need water, and you're going to need a soft cloth. And I have water in a bucket, so let me get my bucket of water. And we're just gonna bring this right to the tabletop. And I recommend that when you're at home, you'll do this at your kitchen sink and you'll have running water and you can keep your cloth clean and you won't have a bit of trouble with this. But of course, in craft classes and in um, demonstrations, we use water in a bucket, which works great because you do need water to do the pressing and the pushing. Now watch what I'm talking about. First of all, I would encourage you before you do any gluing to play with your appliques and make a decision about where and how you wish to place them on the basket. Now let's do this. Let's just place this and be sure that this is the one we want in this particular spot. Push it down with your hand. Here's a little piece that's turned under and get it all situated exactly where you want it. One of the things that sometimes troubles people is centering the appliques in the spot that they want, and people often ask me to give them suggestions as to which one goes on first. This is really up to you. You have to be creative at this point. And I'm decorating the ends of the basket because my bows are going on the side, so I know I want something that fits nicely in that spot. So now that I've made my decision, I'm going to applique these cutouts right here. Then I'm ready to bring this over to my foil and I'm gonna turn the, the fabric over so that I have the color down and the back side up. You have little places that are wrinkled sometimes and you can just straighten those out as you put the Mod Podge on. Now again, I like to work with Mod Podge because it's so successful, but one of the things I love about it is it's slow drying. And this means that it has a very forgiving spirit in letting me make my decisions about where I want things to go and I can scoop this around even after I put it on the basket because Mod Podge dries slowly and allows me some time to make some changes. But once it dries, it's nice and tight and will look gorgeous. So let's go ahead now and put the Mod Podge right onto the fabric. By the way, you can use a glue brush for this. You can put this on with a little um, sponge brushes, but I just like to use my hands. The reason I do is because you're going to get it on your hands anyway, so you might as well just put it on like this with your hands and rub it on in a generous way, and then you'll know that it has exactly the same amount on there that it needs. All right, I'm generous because I want to really wet the fabric completely and totally on the back side. If you do a light coating, sometimes it won't stick as well. So I really recommend that you be generous with your application. Of course, you can use the glue brush if you would like and protect your nails and so forth. Here's a little piece that's turning upside down. Let's see if we can get this straight. You want it on the back side only. I'm trying to keep it on the back side only. Okay, now you see that we have a totally coated piece of fabric on the back side. Our design side is down and it's totally and completely wet and we're ready to go. If you can turn your basket this way, it makes it easier to work with. I'm going to see if I can get mine to stay in that position. All right, I'm ready to put my cutouts right onto the wicker and then I'll turn it around and show you what I'm doing. Just place that right where I want it, where I plan to put it. This is an easy part of the craft. And you know, when I'm teaching, people say this is the most fun because you can be so creative and you can do this any way you want to do it. Some people put a lot of cutouts on a piece and some people put very few. Now, I'd like to show you that I just put that on and tapped it down. 
and you see it's almost sticking now. Mod Podge is incredible. It will stick to glass. But at this point, we're not finished. We're not nearly finished because we want this to look really a part of this piece of wicker. So what we do is just rest the piece right there. It's going to hold on for just a second. Then you want to go over to your bucket of water, and I have a soft cloth in this water. Now, you might use an old diaper. You can use a, a dish cloth, a washcloth, anything that will work for you is fine, but I don't really recommend a sponge. A sponge is not quite as effective as a cloth. Okay, wet the cloth, but then this is important. Wring out the cloth totally and completely. If you'll wring it out really well, that's important because you do not want water to remain in your cloth. That might go through and dilute the glue and keep everything from sticking. Then watch what I do. I literally make a little ball or cushion out of my cloth, my damp cloth. Then, this is important, put your hand under the piece of wicker, put it under just like this for support. And you want to take this cloth that you've balled in, you simply want to press and push and do this. I have one little stubborn piece here. Let's see if we can get that to stick with a little bit of encouragement. All right, turn your cloth over. As Mod Podge begins to build up on your cloth, sometimes that works against you, so I just like to turn the cloth over and use a little cleaner area from time to time. Why am I putting my hand under the basket? I'm doing this for support because wicker gives. And if you just put the basket down and do some hitting like this, the wicker will shift downward and that might keep the applique from sticking. But if you'll put your hand under for support and your other hand to hit, you're going to eventually have the look that you want. This is easy and fun and the results are incredible. Okay, that's nice and tight, and now let me let you see what I've done. My goal is really twofold at this point. I've cleaned off all the excess Mod Podge, and I've made it look neat and clean again from the front. But the most important thing is that by pressing and pushing, I'm literally ridging the fabric right down into the ridges of the wicker, and it gives a hand-painted look. My goal is for this basket to look like this design came on it. I don't want it to look like it was glued on or put on like a decal. I want it to look a part of the wicker. And if you'll do the pressing and the pushing in the manner that I've just shown you, you'll have the exact look that you want. The ridges of the wicker will show and the basket will look totally and completely hand painted. And of course you can do this all over the entire piece or as I have done this from one side to the other from end to end because I'm going to introduce my bows. Remember they're going to go here and here so I'm not going to put appliques or cutouts in this area. You might choose to do that which is of course up to you when you create your piece. While our appliques are drying and we have them on both ends just as we planned, we can set the basket aside and it's time to now get started with the bow. I know you're anxious because everybody wants to make a stiffy bow, so let's get started. Remember, you have two strips of fabric. They're identical strips because they're both eight inches wide. Let's look again at each one. They're eight inches wide and they're 54 inches long. And that's the way we cut them and we place them aside. Now this is the system that you're going to use whether you make a bow that looks like the one on this basket or whether you make a bow that has a long streamer. You can do it either way, but this is the way that you start. All right, let's take a look now. One of these pieces is going to be the streamer strip of the bow. Again, would you look at the bow and let's remind ourselves that the streamer is this section of the bow right here. It's one piece and it's under here. You're going to have a streamer strip for each side of the basket. So let's take this streamer piece and let's fold it in half and let's just cut it in half. Now by doing this, we're going to have a streamer for each side of the project. If you'll just bring the two ends together, again, the selvage is still there, and then take your scissors and cut the strip of fabric in half. One of these will be for the streamer on one side of the basket and one for the other side. All right, let's just rest those right there and then take a look at this strip. It's also eight inches wide, 54 inches long, just like we showed you. And at this time, we're gonna call this the set of loops. This is going to make loops for the bows. So we're going to fold this in half and cut it in half in the exact same way. This is easy. You can do this every time for this particular system of bows. Okay, you want to take these two now, and these are going to be loops. And the last thing you need, of course, is that little section that's going to be the connector piece. Now, all you do to get your connector is just cut 
from one end of your strip of fabric. Now, I always cut from the end that doesn't have the selvage on. Remember, the selvage is down here. So let's cut from this end. I'm going to cut from both pieces. So I just stack them on top of each other. And I'm going to cut about three inches from the end. And I'm just going to cut down just like this. And now look what I have. I have two connectors and I have two loops for my bow. And of course, I have my two streamer strips. Now, this is the way that we're going to create each of the bows, one for one for each side of the basket. Now, I'm going to push these aside and just rest them right there. And I'm going to start with my streamer strips. Now, I find it easier if you make your bow with a system, so always start with your streamer strip. Sometimes it's a lot longer than this, twice this long, and in this case, it's this size. But regardless, if you'll start with your streamer strip, it'll be easier. Now, the product that you're going to use, again, is Stiffy. Stiffy is the fabric stiffener that is going to change this ordinary piece of chintz material into a hardened bow like you see on our finished basket. And it will do this for you every time. It's an easy product because it's so easy to apply. It goes on like milk, and it just uh, dries and forms a beautiful bow. So I'm going to just shake it up a little. You can shake it or stir it, just a slight amount. You don't have to do much. And Stiffy is pour out, ready to go. Now, a lot of people like to pour this into a bowl and dip the cloth in the bowl, but I find it easier to do this. If you'll just take the stiffy and put a narrow puddle of stiffy right down the middle of the strip of fabric, then take your hands and move this strip, this stiffy all over the fabric. By the way, you'll notice that I put a piece of foil down. That's just to protect the countertop. And I did tape the foil at each end so it would not move while I'm doing this. But you don't want to do this directly on your kitchen table or your counter. So it's best if you'll put your foil down before you start. Now look what I'm doing. I'm simply moving the product all over the strip. My goal is to wet this strip entirely. Then I'm going to flip the piece of fabric over. I'm going to follow the exact same step on the back side. I'm going to put Stiffy all over the back side and move it around in the very same way. Stiffy goes on like milk. It's so easy to apply. You won't have a bit of trouble with this and it just is done in no time. Now once you get the strip wet front and back, then you're ready to fold the strip and you're going to bring the sides over nearly to middle, not all the way, but nearly middle, and just place them down and then bring this side over and do a very slight overlap. Now, why do you do a slight overlap? Because if you go way over, then you're eliminating some of the width that you want. So just do a slight overlap. Now, what is this causing? It's causing you to have a center seam down the center back of the strip. And with your hands now, you're ready to tighten all this down. So take your hands, you press and you push, and you literally iron that strip down so that it's very, very tight. You want to do this until you're convinced that this is snug and secure, till you have no wrinkles, no air bubbles, and the stiffy is evenly distributed. Then you want to lift this up, and you need to hang this strip to dry. Of course, you have a seam down the back, but look what you have on the front. A gorgeous strip of fabric that shows no strings and no frays, and therefore, when people see a finished bow, oftentimes they'll look at the bow and they'll say, where is all the cutting edge or where are the strings? Well, you'll never see it because your seam is going to be down the center back just like this one is right here. Now, at this point, you're ready to hang it to dry, and I would suggest, again, go back to your supply list that you use coat hangers and clothespins, and I'm just going to hang this selvage in right over this coat hanger, and I'm going to use a plastic clothespin. You can use wooden clothespins or plastic, whichever. Now I'm ready for this to dry for 45 minutes before I tie it. I'm going to bring this right over, and I'm just going to hang it right here until it dries, all partially dries. Okay, I've got to repeat this same step with my other streamer. This is my other streamer strip. I'm going to put my stiffy on. You notice I always start with my pretty side up. If you'll start pretty side up, you'll end up right where you want to be. Just move it around. It doesn't take but a minute. And then flip over. Repeat the very same step on the back side. Stiffy on the front, stiffy on the back. Move it all around and then flip and fold. This is so easy. You're going to be amazed at how fast this is and how little time it takes. Bring this over to not quite center but near center. Bring this side over 
and do that slight overlap, that narrow overlap. By the way, do you see the strings? When you have strings like that, don't worry. Just get those to rest right there at that seam and you'll never see them again because they'll get dry at the seam and you won't have to worry. Press out all the extra stiffy. Get rid of anything that's dripping out or oozing out. Get rid of any air bubbles. Tighten it all down. Press and push. Now, that strip's ready and looks beautiful and ready to be hung. Again, with your fold down the center back and your pretty side is going to show when you tie your bow. So here goes my other streamer strip. Now I'm ready to work on my loop strip. Now this is a loop strip because it's shorter. I cut the three inch piece off of the loop strip so I know that this is a little bit shorter and this is going to form the loops of my bow. Again, stiffy down the middle. By the way, it doesn't take as much as you begin to work because some of the stiffy is still remaining on the foil and that's a plus, that helps. So you can really get a lot of bows with one container of stiffy. It's very economical. It also doesn't take as much on the back side as it does on the front. All right, I'm gonna just move this all around again and then here I go with my fold to the center, center back seam, that's my goal. But tight, flat and tight. Now here goes my other set of loops, or my first set of loops. This is going to form loops when it dries. And then I'm going to go and hang this, this to dry as well. And now I think I'll go ahead and do my connector for that bow. Let's just take this little piece and let me show you what to do with that. Again, you've got to apply the stiffy. Always start pretty side up. Flip over, back side. Now, I am going to do a tighter fold this time. I would like to end up with a strip that's about an inch wide. So I'm gonna do a little bit tighter fold. I'm not just going to meet, I'm gonna do a sort of an overlap at this point. And press and push and clean out all the extra stiffy and then lift and hang to dry. Okay, what I have is a strip that's about one inch to one and a half inches. If you'll stay about that width with your connector piece, it will be prettier when you tie your bow because you won't cover the puckers in your bow. If it gets too wide, it might cover the puckers. Okay, let's hang that to dry as well. And then I'm ready to finish and add the last bit of stiffy to the last strip, and then we're going to allow these all to partially dry, and then we're going to form the bow. Now that our bows have been drying for 45 minutes, we can take them down and begin to work with them. Now some fabrics will dry in a little bit shorter time and some will take a little longer, so you just check them. What you wanna have is strips that look like this. They should be partially dry, not totally dry, but partially dry. They should be flexible, but not mush any longer. So that takes about 45 minutes. Now you wanna trim off the selvage at this point. Take down your streamer piece, trim the selvage, and then go to the other end and you wanna trim that in and just clip it off to make it nice and neat. Now this is the piece that's going to be the streamer of the bow, so fold it exactly in half. Bring the two ends together and then come down and make a hard pinch. And that's going to be your point of beginning for the bow. Simply put your hand inside and push across the strip and just push across with a press, push, and gather, and push, and gather, and that's all you do to get you across the strip of fabric. Take your clothespin and clamp it right at that point at the center of the strip, and that's where you're going to build your bow. Now you take down your other strip, and this is the piece that you remember is the loops of the bow, and all you need to do now is clip off the selvage off of this end because you're through with it. Go to the other end and clip off that end and get rid of any strings or frays. Now it's very important to find your seam again. Be sure you can see the seam and fold the strip together. Both ends meet just like we did with the other piece. Then come down, you wanna make a good hard crease. Now this crease is important because this is where you're going to fold. Now what you wanna do is crease and press. Then open the strip, let's get an area here to work. Open the strip and there's my crease. I can easily see the crease. And I wanna use that as my center fold and I wanna bring this side of my strip over center and you wanna go over that line about an inch. Now look for it and look carefully and then bring that side over about an inch. Then bring this side over the same amount. Now you've got to check the strip and make sure that you have this strip over the center. The reason you do that is so the bow will not pull out. Then turn it back over and there's your center and you can see it because you made the crease and now you're ready to do the very same procedure. Gather, pinch, push, 
and gather and pinch across until you have brought the bow in at the center just like this. And then you wanna hold it right there while you gently take your hand and open up the set of loops. You're going to do this as much from the inside as you are from the outside. You can turn the bow over in this manner and you're going to open up the strip. Now this is why you waited 45 minutes so that the bow would have enough drying time to give you some pretty open loops like this. You see what you have? You have a bow that's beginning to take shape. Simply by folding the two ends to the center, this is the way you create the set of loops that we keep talking about. Now what you have is a streamer, a set of loops, and don't forget, go back to the coat, coat hanger and get your connector, and that's the little piece that you're going to use to wrap the bow. You can put Stiffy on the back to re-wet it if you want to, but I'm going to use a hot glue gun to secure mine today, just to make it easy. Now you're ready to tie the bow. Simply lift the streamer into your hand, remove the clip, and all you do at this point is flatten down the streamer so that you can sit something on top conveniently. You just wanna push it down and flatten it down. Then you wanna take the set of loops and you wanna remove the clothespin and take the set of loops and simply place the set of loops right down on top of the streamer. Now you can check your bow at this point. If you like the color on this side, you can let this be the top or you can turn the bow over and this can be the top of the bow. You can do either way because your seam is on the inside. Now you have to smush the bow together at this point. Literally flatten it down and smush it together. Hold it with one hand. Open up your loops again just to make everything look neat and nice. And then you go to your little connector piece and all you do is take this connector, you place it in the center of the entire bow and then you wanna put your thumb over to hold it. This is sort of like a clamp, it just holds it in place. Then you wanna put about as much fabric to the right as you have to the left. And you want to bring the little connector piece under the bow. Bring it under and then bring it back over the top of the bow like this. And when you do this, you can just hide the connector right down underneath in that area. Then bring this side of the connector back over and wrap it around the back side of the bow. You just continue on and sometimes if you're real lucky, you stretch it, you pull it and you tighten it up and you can keep on going and end up on the back side. But not so with this one, which is pretty normal. So you flip the bow over and you go to the back side and lift the connector up and cut off the connector. The reason that you do it in this way is so that connector definitely ends up on the back side of the bow. Now, you know that won't stay without some security, so a drop of hot glue right there and then you pat it down and your connector will hold. Now, let's turn back over and take a look at the bow. What you have is a sort of flat looking bow. Your streamers are in place and things are looking all right, but you wanna perk it up. So the way we do this is we stuff the bow and we stuff with cups. And cups are a wonderful source because they can open the bow up, give the bow loops encouragement to dry. So simply get a, some cups that will fit, use whatever will slide into the bow gently and push them into the loops of the bow. By the way, you might wanna check your seams inside and you can put them in with the seams the way the seams are resting. Now, you wanna take a clothespin or something to secure that connector until it dries a little bit and you can go back and rehang this bow on your coat hanger again or just rest it on a table and allow it to dry with the cups in for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. That's about how long it takes before it's ready to hot glue right onto the basket. Okay, now that our bow has dried with the cups in it and we know that our loops are all ready, we're ready to remove the cups. And all we wanna do now is take the streamers and twist them downward because we're gonna place them on the basket on the front. So just hold to the center, hold at the connector and twist the streamers this way. And then you're ready to hot glue the bow right onto the basket. And you're going to put a good, generous dollop of glue right at the spot where you want the bow to be placed, where you're going to put the connector. So let's put the glue right here in this spot. Good, generous dollop of glue. And then take the bow and place it right there. Now you're gonna to wanna to hold that bow securely. Hold it tight for a few minutes. I think it takes about 45 seconds for the glue to dry and cool and that's what, that will make it adhere to the project. Now 
Now when that is dry and cooled, you can go ahead then and dress up your basket and you can do some designing with your streamers. And I'm just going to bring the streamers down in this manner and I'm going to lift them up and sort of wave them onto the project just to give it an added interest in sort of this manner. And I'm going to remove my hand now. I believe it's going to hold. And I'm going to do some trimming by cutting a V notch. If you'll just cut from the corner of the strip to the middle and from this corner to the middle, then what you'll do is cut out a little triangle and give a little added interest to the bow and dress up your end there. This is, of course, optional. You might not want to do that. Then you want to put a little hot glue right there on the fabric and glue it down. And of course, we've got to repeat that on this side. You're just going to wave the streamer in this manner and, of course, cut your V-notch from corner to middle, from this corner to middle, and then the application of hot glue right there on the streamer, and then you're going to wave up and glue down just like this. Now, of course, you want to check out and make sure that you've centered this and that both of the streamers look the same. And then you're all set. And you do this, of course, to both sides of the basket. And that's going to give you that beautiful, dressy, finished look that you need. Now that our project is finished, let's take a look one more time. We did start with a completely raw piece of wicker. Remember this basket from the beginning had no design and no interest? Look what we've created. It's been worth it too, but we're ready to finish it now. There's one final step that needs to be done, and this is spraying the basket to give it a coating or a protective finish that will also give it a pretty shiny finish. Now we want to look at the, the products that are available for us, and those are Clear Coat Glaze by Folk Art, which is a wonderful finish if you would like a shiny look, but not ultra shiny. This product comes in a six ounce and an 11 ounce size, so you can choose whichever. And then of course we have High Shine, and High Shine is available in your craft store as well. It comes in the same sizes, but the difference is High Shine is going to give you an ultra shiny lacquered finish, very glossy. Now. That's what I used on the project that I showed you at the beginning, so let me remind you again of how it will look when you finish. You're going to want to follow all the directions on the High Shine and Glaze label. Everything is spelled out. You just read and follow directions. You'll want to go to a well-ventilated area and spray the entire project. This spray is going to go all over the bows, the basket, the cutouts, the trim, everything, and it's going to give it a beautiful, bright, shiny finish. That's going to end your project with a finish that's going to protect and make it extra interesting and bright. This is all there is to it. It's a step-by-step -step cut and paste project, just like I told you. I can't wait to see what we're gonna do for the next project. Let's go and find another yard of fabric, another piece of wicker, and let's get started, okay? We hope you've enjoyed the tape and we hope you've enjoyed learning how to create a beautiful Bow Dazzler project. But this is just the beginning for you. You'll want to check out all the ideas available in our series of Bow Dazzler books by Plaid. I have authored several of these books. This one is Bow Dazzler Victorian Style and this is for those of you who really want to learn how to decorate your home with the new Victorian look, bringing back the old but introducing new ideas with the Stiffy and with the Mod Podge. We've also included some floral designs in this book. There are 30 projects here. You're going to get some wonderful ideas if your decor is Victorian. Now, if you like country design, don't miss Bow Dazzler, The Country Look. This book features beautiful country baskets and ribbons and things that you can introduce to even unpainted pieces. There are wonderful ideas here and they all feature the country decor. And also this book, which features Bow Dazzler in your home. Now, this is my favorite because it was photographed in Atlanta at the Street of Dreams. And in this book, we're going to teach you how to create beautiful napkin rings and portrait bows, which hang over pictures in decorator rooms. And you're going to get a magazine style with this book. It shows you room after room of beautiful Bow Dazzler baskets featured in room settings. You'll have a ball, the fabrics are gorgeous, and you'll get lots of good ideas. Now, this is your basic Bow Dazzler set of directions. This is what your tape was taken from today. So if you need to get a book to help you follow along after the tape is over, then you'll want to get your Bow Dazzler book, the light blue cover, and this will be all the information again for you that you've studied today in your tape. And don't forget this book, which is Cindy Ozarzak's book on Bow Dazzler Ruffles and Roses. 
Cindy also has wonderful ideas on how to create beautiful ruffles like you see on this piece right here using Stiffy and of course she adds the Stiffy bows. And also there's a great book called Stiffy Stuffers that's available to show you some wonderful ideas using animals and different things that you can cut out and stuff and use with the bows. Now this is all just the beginning for you. You're going to have a great time because in each magazine we have between 20 to 40 projects to show you. So get going, get all your supplies and have a great time with your Bow Dazzler projects.